Welcome back to Tales of Chemistry. Today, let us study Chapter 3b, Analytical Chemistry. What is this chapter all about? In this chapter, we are using two lab reagents. One is sodium hydroxide solution. Second one is ammonium hydroxide. Now, these two solutions are used to identify the cation present in a given salt, meaning different cations behave differently when treated with either NaOH solution or NH4OH solution based on the color of the precipitate and the nature of the precipitate like is it uh, soluble in excess of NaOH or not etc. These behaviors help us identify the cation present in the given salt. Only the cation is analyzed or identified by NaOH solution or NH4OH solution. Okay, so let us begin with the colored cations. The three colored cations that we need to study are Fe2+, Fe3+, and Cu. 2 plus Fe2 plus Fe3 plus and Cu2 plus. So let us begin. First one, Fe2 plus, color of the salt is pale green. Green or pale green is the color of the salt. When you dissolve the ferrous salt in water, again, the color of the solution is also pale green. Salt and solution are of the same color. Now, what are we doing in NaOH solution test? About 1 ml milliliter of the ferrous salt solution, ferrous salt solution is to be treated with few drops five drops maximum, few drops of sodium hydroxide solution. So take one ml of the given pale green color salt solution, treat it with few drops of sodium hydroxide solution. What will you get now? So you will be getting a green color precipitate, okay, dirty green Precipitate is seen. Precipitate is because of FeOH twice. Dirty green precipitate is seen, which is insoluble, which is insoluble in excess of NaOH solution. So what does this mean? When you add more amount of sodium hydroxide, once you get the precipitate, okay, no change will happen to the precipitate. In fact, uh, you know, the intensity, you may feel that intensity of green color is increasing, but the precipitate is not at all dissolving in sodium hydroxide solution. This is the sodium hydroxide solution test for any ferrous salt. Let us try writing equations. FeSO4, the commonly used ferrous salt solution or even FeCl2 can be taken. Any one of these when treated with sodium hydroxide solution, even FeSO4 solution is taken. Okay, uh, you are getting FeOH twice. Okay, along with FeOH twice, Na2SO4. The second case will be FeCl2 plus 2 NaOH will again give you FeOH twice plus 2 NaCl. So the dirty green precipitate is 
F E O H twice. This precipitate, its nature is it is insoluble in excess of NaOH. Now, same Fe two plus can be made to undergo ammonium hydroxide test. I don't have to mention ammonium hydroxide solution because. Ammonium hydroxide is always a solution. It is prepared by passing ammonia gas through water. Well, now here what will happen is same way 1 ml of Fe2 plus salt solution. It is treated with few drops of few drops of NH4OH. Okay you are getting dirty green precipitate. Dirty green precipitate of FeOH twice is seen which is insoluble which is insoluble in excess. All right. So, that is about ferrous salt solution. So, how do we conclude this ferrous salt solution? Whether you are treating it with NaOH solution or with NH4OH, it will give you a dirty green precipitate which is insoluble in excess. FeSO4 plus solution definitely plus NH4OH that is also in the liquid state, you will be getting a precipitate FeOH twice and NH4 twice SO4 that is ammonium sulfate. NH4 twice SO4 is ammonium sulfate. Now, that is all about the green color salt solution, which is Fe2 plus salt solution. Okay, then the next cation, which is under observation, under analysis, is Fe3 plus. Color of the salt Fe3 plus, you can write brown, you can even write reddish brown, which is accepted brown or reddish brown salt and solution is also of the same color. Salt is brown or reddish brown. Solution is also brown or reddish brown in color. Now again we need to treat them uh, with sodium hydroxide solution after which we will treat them again with ammonium hydroxide solution. So, the sodium hydroxide solution test is 1 ml of ferric Fe3 plus ferric salt solution. 1 ml of ferric salt solution is treated with few drops of NaOH solution. What was or what will be the observation? Reddish brown precipitate will be seen here. Make it a point to write reddish brown itself. Reddish brown precipitate is formed or is seen which is insoluble reddish brown precipitate is seen which is insoluble in excess meaning excess of NaOH solution when you add more amount of NaOH after the precipitate is formed the precipitate will still remain as it is equation Let's take ferric chloride. This is the generally used equation or asked question. FeCl3 and 3NaOH, ferric chloride solution, sodium hydroxide solution, react to give us FeOH thrice, which is the 
reddish brown precipitate reddish brown precipitate and along with this we are getting sodium chloride the next test will be ammonium hydroxide test same way 1 ml of the salt solution salt here is fe3 plus right 1 ml of the ferric salt solution is treated with 1 ml of ferric salt solution is treated with the few drops of nh4oh solution 1 ml of ferric salt solution is treated with the few drops of ammonium hydroxide okay you will get to see a reddish brown precipitate is seen or reddish brown precipitate of ferric hydroxide is seen which is insoluble which is insoluble in excess okay so 1 ml of ferric salt solution when treated with few drops of ammonium hydroxide solution you are getting to see reddish brown precipitate which is insoluble in excess i mean in excess of ammonium hydroxide equation fecl3 plus 3 nh4oh all solutions are to be used gives you fe oh thrice plus 3 nh4cl fe oh thrice is the reddish brown precipitate now few questions possible will be name the reddish brown precipitate or reddish brown hydroxide okay which is which is insoluble in excess of NaOH solution and NH4OH answer here is FeOH thrice or again we can ask name the dirty green hydroxide or just green hydroxide which is insoluble which is insoluble in excess of NaOH solution and NH4OH solution answer FeOH twice now instead of the hydroxide we can also ask name a green color salt okay which gives a dirty green precipitate which gives a dirty green precipitate with NaOH solution or with NH4OH solution so you can pick the salt as FeSO4 or even FeCl2 similarly a brown salt can be asked which gives a brown precipitate reddish brown precipitate then the brown salt will be FeCl3 okay so the next one is suggest a test suggest a test to distinguish between fecl3 and fe 
SO4, FeCl3 and FeSO4. Okay, so, you know, let's follow this uh, type of presentation. First of all, write which solution that you are using. Okay, so I'm deciding to use NaOH. I can use NH4OH also. So NaOH solution test. So that is what I'm giving as the title. Okay, then I can probably divide it into two columns. In the first column, give this as the title. In the first column, you write FeCl3 solution. And in the second column, FeSO4 solution. Now here, you can write a reddish, reddish brown precipitate is seen which is insoluble, which is insoluble in excess. On the other side, you should write dirty green precipitate is seen, which is insoluble in excess. Now, the advantage of making columns and writing is, you know, you don't even have to complete your sentence. Or else, if you don't want to write like this, you can write, treat uh, the, uh, you know, given salt solution separately with sodium hydroxide solution. The one which gives reddish brown precipitate is so uh, ferric chloride. And the one which gives green precipitate is ferrous sulfate. So that's up to you. This is just a suggestion. You can make two columns and write. All right. Moving on with the next ion or next salt is Cu2 plus salt. The salt is blue in color. Salt solution also is blue in color. One exception is CuCO3 is green in color. Okay, now we are not studying anything about copper carbonate here because copper carbonate is insoluble. You know, in uh, preparation of salts, we have studied metal carbonates are insoluble. So we need salt solution, right? So we may not come across any copper carbonate uh, reactions, reactions of copper carbonate. So let us focus on copper sulfate here, which is water soluble. Copper sulfate is blue in color. Copper sulfate solution is also blue in color. So the first test is NaOH solution test. So as usual, we will write 1 ml of the given salt, Cu2 plus salt solution. 1 ml of Cu2 plus salt solution is... Treated with a few drops of NaOH solution. 1 ml of copper salt solution is treated with few drops of NaOH solution. And uh, the color of the precipitate is again blue in color. So, pale blue or if you miss pale blue, it's absolutely fine. Uh, pale blue precipitate of copper hydroxide is seen. Pale blue precipitate is seen, which is insoluble, which is insoluble in excess of NaOH solution. All right. And one equation is CuSO4 solution when treated with sodium hydroxide solution gives you copper hydroxide, which is the pale blue precipitate. Along with this, you are getting sodium sulfate. So even this precipitate 
copper hydroxide is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide solution. So far, we have not studied any precipitate which is soluble. Ferrous hydroxide, insoluble in both NaOH and NH4OH solutions. Ferric also is insoluble in both solutions. Copper, we have studied only with sodium hydroxide and uh, copper hydroxide is insoluble in sodium hydroxide solution. Moving on, we have the next test with copper. Ammonium hydroxide solution test. In this, same procedure is followed. 1 ml of the salt solution, 1 ml of the salt solution is uh, treated with, uh, is treated with a uh, few drops of ammon yes, ammonium hydroxide solution. You will be getting a pale blue precipitate so, your observation is pale blue precipitate or just write blue precipitate is seen, pale blue precipitate is seen, which is, note this difference, which is soluble. First time we are learning something soluble. Pale blue precipitate is seen, which is soluble in excess, excess of ammonium hydroxide. Okay, so pale blue precipitate which is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide solution giving an inky blue Solution. Underline the word solution once again. Inky blue solution is seen. Blue precipitate dissolves to give an inky blue solution. Equation CuSO4 plus 2NH4OH gives you CuOH twice plus NH4 twice SO4. So the blue precipitate is copper hydroxide. And since this is soluble, let us write one more equation. But the second equation is not compulsory to study. NH4 twice SO4. You are treating this with plenty of ammonium hydroxide. You will be getting... CuNH3 4 times SO4. This is called tetraamine copper sulfate. Tetraamine copper sulfate um, along with this water. So the tetraamine copper sulfate is the pale, uh, sorry, the inky blue solution. Tetraamine copper sulfate is the inky blue solution. All right, moving on. One possible question here is name a hydroxide, hydroxide which is insoluble, which is insoluble in sodium hydroxide solution, but, but, soluble in ammonium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide solution. Since the question is hydroxide, it is copper hydroxide. Okay, since a name, better to write the name copper 2 hydroxide. Copper 2 hydroxide. Okay, now the question can even be about a salt. Name a salt Name a salt whose hydroxide or uh, which name a salt which when treated with with 
excess of ammonium hydroxide gives an inky blue solution. Okay. Or again, here, observation type of questions are possible. Give your observation. Observation type questions. Sorry. Give your observation when say for example copper sulfate when copper sulfate solution is treated with copper sulfate solution is treated with nh4oh look at the way i'm presenting the question drop wise till in excess so both you should write drop wise what happens and in excess what happens give your observation when copper sulfate solution is treated with ammonium hydroxide drop wise till excess okay so drop wise that is initially copper sulfate solution with the few drops of few drops of ammonium hydroxide gives pale blue precipitate pale blue precipitate which dissolves in excess which dissolves in excess to give an inky blue solution which dissolves in excess to give an inky blue solution copper sulfate solution when treated with initially few drops that has to be written and when in excess what happens okay both colors are important another possibility here is suggest a test to distinguish Okay, we have dis uh, discussed one with FeCl3 and FeSO4, right? Similarly, suggest a test, a chemical test to distinguish. Suggest a chemical test to distinguish between copper sulfate and maybe ferrous sulfate. So, what did I tell you? First of all, right, which reagent are you using? Here again, you can go for NaOH, you can go for NH4OH also. So, pick any one. Let me pick NaOH solution. So, I'm writing NaOH solution is used or NaOH solution test can be written. Then I'm making two columns, one for the first salt solution, okay, and second column for FeSO4 solution. Now, under this, uh, you know, what happens is 1 ml of copper sulfate, fine. So, 1 ml, not compulsory to write 1 ml and all. 1 ml of copper uh, sulfate solution is treated with a few drops of the reagent, few drops of NaOH solution. You can straight away write here pale blue precipitate seen which is insoluble. So, I am writing this gives you pale blue precipitate comma insoluble insoluble in excess pale blue precipitate insoluble in excess here what happens is a uh, uh, red sorry ferrous no so dirty green dirty green precipitate dirty green precipitate which is insoluble insoluble in 
excess. If you had taken ammonium hydroxide, then your first observation for copper sulfate will be pale blue precipitate soluble in excess giving an inky blue solution and ferrous sulfate will remain the same dirty green insoluble in excess. So these are the possibilities uh, apart from the equation. Equations can also be asked straight away. So the three colored uh, salts ferrous, ferric and copper we just completed. Now another very important uh, salt that we must study is calcium salt. Ca2 plus calcium salt. Salt is white in color. Salt is white in color, but when you prepare the salt solution, you will get a colorless solution. Okay, so first of all here, NaOH test, I mean NaOH solution test, 1 ml of calcium salt solution is treated with few drops of few drops of NaOH solution okay you are getting a white precipitate salt is white so precipitate is also white white precipitate white precipitate insoluble again insoluble white precipitate insoluble in excess of excess of sodium hydroxide is seen fine white precipitate insoluble in sodium hydroxide solution so how do we write the equation calcium nitrate all right. I cannot take calcium carbonate because calcium carbonate is insoluble in water and I need to prepare a solution, right? So that is the reason calcium nitrate is taken. Even calcium sulfate is a precipitate. It's insoluble in water. So calcium nitrate when treated with Sodium hydroxide NaOH solution um, to NaOH will give us calcium hydroxide which is the white precipitate along with this NaNO3. Okay, now there is a twist with ammonium hydroxide. Now what is the twist? Okay, ammonium hydroxide test is what I'm writing, but actually calcium salts have no reaction with ammonium hydroxide. So there will be no observation. Your explanation here, Ca2 plus salts do not react or do not give any precipitate, do not react with NH4OH. The reason is ammonium hydroxide is a weak alkali. So, concentration of OH- is low or less negligible. Why? Because NH4OH is a a weak base. Partial, um, you know, dissociation will take place since um, NH4OH is a weak base, concentration of OH- is very less and that low concentration cannot precipitate calcium hydroxide. This low concentration of OH- ions cannot uh, precipitate they cannot precipitate calcium as calcium hydroxide. So it cannot precipitate calcium hydroxide. So because calcium salts have no reaction with ammonium hydroxide, there comes one question. Name a salt, okay, that reacts, name a salt that reacts with 
NaOH solution but but does not react does not react with NH4OH solution fine so that salt is calcium nitrate since the question is a name let us write name or identify a salt you can even give the formula moving on the next salt next cation that we needed to study is zinc zn2 plus the salt is white in color zinc salt is white in color and uh, the zinc salt solution will be colorless salt is white and the solution is colorless okay now here First of all, let us study the NaOH solution test. So, as usual, same way we will write 1 ml of a zinc salt solution is treated with few drops of few drops of sodium hydroxide solution. 1 ml of Zinc salt solution is treated with a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution. Okay. And here you are getting a white precipitate. But this white has a speciality. This is called gelatinous white. Okay. White precipitate or gelatinous it's absolutely fine even if you miss this word gelatinous. So, you get a gelatinous white precipitate. Okay. And the second importance here is this precipitate is soluble in um, sodium hydroxide solution. So, you are getting gelatinous white precipitate. which dissolves in excess of NaOH solution, gelatinous white precipitate, which dissolves in excess of sodium hydroxide solution. So, first time we are studying something which is soluble in sodium hydroxide solution also. Let us write equation. ZnSO4 can be taken. Zinc nitrate can also be taken. So, zinc sulfate solution when treated with sodium hydroxide solution gives you ZnOH twice, that is the gelatinous white precipitate, along with that Na2SO4, sodium sulfate Na2SO4. Now, this zinc hydroxide, when you treat it again with the sodium hydroxide, that is excess of sodium hydroxide, it gives you Na2ZnO2, which is sodium zincate, Na2ZnO2 plus 2H2O. It's not compulsory to study the second equation. Okay, so this is just a proof that what happens in excess, you get sodium zincate, which is a complex salt solution, which dissolves in water. Okay, so that is about a zinc. Now, what will be the behavior of a zinc with ammonium hydroxide solution? Let us see that. Okay, so with the ammonium hydroxide solution. Same way, I'm not writing that test now. Uh, it reacts with, uh, you know, 1 ml of zinc salt solution is reacting with a few drops of ammonium hydroxide to give us white precipitate, gelatinous white precipitate, which is soluble. Once again, uh, the 
precipitate here gelatinous white precipitate is soluble in both ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide so let us straight away write the equation fine znso4 plus nh4oh both solutions gives us zinc hydroxide along with that ammonium NH4 twice sulfate. Since it is soluble, I will now collect the precipitate zinc hydroxide along with the salt ammonium sulfate and then treat it with excess of ammonium hydroxide and the result here is tetraamine zinc sulfate Zn NH3 four times tetraamine zinc sulfate okay along with water molecules. So this is tetramine zinc sulfate which is also a complex salt. Okay moving on the last cation that we need to study is Pb2 plus. Pb2 plus also the salt is white in color and the solution is colorless. Two tests we will conduct the NaOH test as well as the NH4OH test. NaOH, you will be getting chalky white precipitate, chalk like, chalky white precipitate, okay, which is uh, here, you know, the precipitate is a soluble, chalky white precipitate which is soluble in excess of excess of NaOH solution. So, let's write the equation. Once again, in the case of lead, the salt that we can take is lead nitrate because lead chloride is insoluble, lead sulfate also is insoluble. So lead nitrate solution when treated with sodium hydroxide solution gives you chalky white precipitate of lead hydroxide along with sodium nitrate 2NaNO3. Now, since this is soluble, we need to write one more equation and as I have told earlier, not compulsory to study the second equation. PbOH twice plus 2NaOH excess gives you Na2PbO2 that is sodium plumbite which is a complex salt along with that along with sodium plumbite, you are getting a water. Okay. Now, moving on again, uh, ammonium hydroxide test. Under ammonium hydroxide test, you will be getting chalky white precipitate but insoluble chalky white precipitate insoluble in excess. So here we have only one equation. Take that lead nitrate. Okay. Treat that lead nitrate with um, ammonium hydroxide solution. You will be getting PbOH twice, which is your chalky white precipitate, along with ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3. This is the balanced equation. PbOH twice is uh, chalky white precipitate. It is insoluble in ammonium hydroxide. So with this, we have completed all the cation test as per syllabus. Ferrous ferric copper, calcium 
zinc and lead. Now, one very frequently asked uh, board question is, suggest a chemical test. Suggest a chemical test to distinguish between distinguish between um, zinc nitrate or maybe zinc sulfate can be taken, zinc nitrate and lead nitrate. Okay, so as we have discussed earlier, the first statement is which solution are you taking? Here, you cannot take sodium hydroxide solution. You can only take ammonium hydroxide solution. So the test that you are conducting is ammonium hydroxide test only. Why not sodium hydroxide? Reason both of them, zinc and lead, are giving you white precipitate. Now, you may think that, okay, one is giving gelatinous and the other one is giving chalky white precipitate. No, that's not a difference. White is white, whether it is gelatinous or chalky white. Ultimately, the color is white. Okay, so both are giving white precipitate and both these precipitates are soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide solution. That is the reason sodium hydroxide solution test is not used. Now, ammonium hydroxide solution, then two columns. The first one is for a zinc salt. I've just written Zn2 plus. You can write the salt completely, lead nitrate. Now, straight away with the observation, zinc uh, nitrate solution gives you a white precipitate, which is soluble, which is soluble in excess of NH4OH solution. You can also write gelatinous white precipitate. Similarly, under lead, you are getting white or chalky white precipitate, white precipitate, which is insoluble, which is, sorry, insoluble. in excess of ammonium hydroxide. That is it. So this is a very repeated question, very much repeated question. So, you know, mark this important. Okay, now this lesson continues with certain reactions of hot concentrated sodium hydroxide. So, Reactive metals, as per syllabus, we need to study only zinc, aluminium and also lead. So these three metals, zinc, aluminium and uh, lead, react with hot concentrated sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So let us study that. Action of hot concentrated NaOH or KOH on three metals, zinc, aluminium and lead. Let us take zinc first. Zinc when treated with sodium hydroxide, which is hot and concentrated, we are getting Na2ZnO2, that is sodium zincate, along with hydrogen. Similarly, when zinc is treated with potassium hydroxide, same condition, hot concentrated potassium hydroxide, you are getting K2ZnO2 and hydrogen. How will they ask the question? One, name the gas uh, evolved when zinc is dropped in hot concentrated alkali or else they can directly ask the equation. Equation is the most repeated one. Write the balanced equation when zinc is reacting with 
hot concentrated NaOH. All right. Now let us take um, lead. Lead and sodium hydroxide hot concentrated gives you Na2PbO2 sodium plumbite along with hydrogen. Same way, if not sodium hydroxide, you can take hot concentrated potassium hydroxide, which will give you K2PBO2 and H2. Okay, potassium plumbite and hydrogen. Last metal, aluminium. But aluminium reacts in a slightly different way, that is, Presence of water moisture is important for aluminium. Okay, so hot concentrated alkali itself is taken and the water present in hot concentrated alkali is used to combine with aluminium. So aluminium, the alkali and water react together to give us sodium aluminate NaAlO2 sodium aluminate along with hydrogen. Similarly, potassium hydroxide also 2Al plus 2KOH definitely hot concentrated along with water gives us 2 KAlO2, potassium aluminate and hydrogen. In all these reactions, the salt formed is a complex salt. Salt formed is a complex salt. All right. Now, one of these equations, I can uh, guarantee you that one of these equations are coming in your board examination. Moving on. We are now learning a new term, amphoteric. So let's write that as our title, amphoteric uh, compounds or hydroxides or whatever. Yeah, Amphoteric compounds. Here precisely we are learning amphoteric oxides and hydroxides. Oxides and hydroxides. First of all, what is the meaning of amphoteric? Okay, amphoteric substances are those which can react with both acids and bases. So, those substances that can react those substances that can react with both acids and alkalis are called are called amphoteric substances meaning when treated with a base, amphoteric substance will act as an acid and when treated with an acid, amphoteric substance will behave like a base. Basically, they show both the properties of acids and bases. Some examples for amphoteric oxides are ZnO, PbO and Al2O3. These oxides are amphoteric. Similarly, the same metal hydroxide, zinc hydroxide, lead hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide are also amphoteric in nature. So what kind of questions can we expect? One is what are amphoteric substances? Now, or else they can ask this under the odd one uh, out kind of question. Pick the odd one and give your reason. It's uh, not just picking out the odd one. Always you need to give the reason. So let me give you one or two examples. Number one is maybe I can give ZNO, PBO, Al2O3, 
comma calcium oxide so the odd one is calcium oxide A reason calcium oxide is basic and the other oxides are amphoteric or i can give na2o k2o calcium oxide and al2o3 here the odd one is al2o3 because this is amphoteric and the others are basic in nature look at this zinc hydroxide calcium hydroxide and uh, aluminium hydroxide your answer will be calcium hydroxide because zinc and aluminium hydroxides are uh, amphoteric and uh, calcium hydroxide is basic now last part in this lesson is these amphoteric oxides and hydroxides react with okay these amphoteric oxides and hydroxides react with hot concentrated alkali so let's write those equations zno zinc oxide with sodium hydroxide definitely hot concentrated your uh, equation will be na2 zno2 say, same sodium zincate but instead of hydrogen you will get water here you can repeat this with potassium also pbo along with sodium hydroxide hot concentrated gives you na2 pbo2 along with water okay you can repeat this even with potassium hydroxide now let me take zinc hydroxide okay zinc hydroxide and sodium hydroxide hot concentrated will give you na2 zno2 that is sodium zincate along with sodium zincate you will get water same way if you take lead hydroxide okay treat lead hydroxide with sodium hydroxide you will be getting na2 pbo2 sodium plumbite along with water last metal is aluminium so let us take aluminium oxide treat it with hot concentrated sodium hydroxide okay so here you are getting sodium aluminate NaAlO2 along with water now if you are taking aluminium hydroxide along with sodium hydroxide hot concentrated your result will be NaAlO2 that is sodium aluminate along with water molecule all right so generally the equation in the board examination equation asked us with the metal and alkali that doesn't mean that this can be skipped no please study these equations also so with this we are done completely with the analytical chemistry thank you for watching stay tuned for more videos